Let's try this again. Let's see if we're live. Let's see if we're live. We've been having technical difficulties all morning. And then when I finally got it solved, I went live in the wrong place. Okay, everything on my end says we're live. Everything on my end says we're good. Guys, blink twice if we're good. Blink live. <laughs> blink twice if you can see me. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is how we do it, guys. Happy Thursday. Welcome one and all. As you guys who are, uh, if you guys are new here, welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, as you guys jump in here, jump into the comments. Tell me where you guys are joining us from. For those of you guys that don't know, we stream live every single Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time right here from my igloo in Wasilla, Alaska. Devin Landers, come on down. What's going on, baby boy? Thanks for being here, man. What is going on? Let me try to click there and hold there. I gave you some love. I loved, I hearted your comment. If you guys, um, Iowa, Brandon Laney, what's going on, man? I hope you're feeling better. Gosh, dang it. Brandon wasn't feeling too well last night. Mr. Duzan, Mr. Duzan, what's going on, my friend? How is life out in Kentucky? We finally got, it has been nothing but like overcast and showers and cold and rainy since like, I don't know, um, like July, August. Like we've maybe had like one or two good days, but it has just been absolutely crappy weather. And guys, it is like, it is the most, go I, oh my gosh. I wish I could just like, okay, go follow me because I'm going to post it. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to post a picture out my front window. I'm going to go post it in the Growth Co. Facebook group so you guys can see it. It is like the most perfect day outside. It hasn't been like this in what feels like weeks or even months. Perfect day there. I just posted it in the growth co Facebook group. You guys can go look at it and see what I, you guys can go see my view, but it's just the most beautiful day. We've got snow on our mountaintops now. Um, and, uh, gosh, dang it. We've got just the most beautiful fall colors you've ever seen in your life. I'm going to go get on the four wheeler today. I'm going to go drive on some of the trails and I'm going to go show you guys just how gorgeous Alaska is. Actually go to my Facebook group. I actually posted a really neat picture. Um, I went four wheeling up in the mountains and I could see like the entire Valley and just the, the foliage and everything it is like literally the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. It is absolutely gorgeous. Love it here. But, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for being here again for anybody, for anybody who's new, we go live every single Thursday in here. And we not only talk information, but we talk implementation. That's the hardest part for moving anybody's business is understanding how to implement the information. And it's ironic because most people think that, you know what's missing? The reason I'm not where I wanna be is because I just need more information. It's not more information that you need. I promise you, most of you probably already have enough information, but what you're lacking is implementation. You're lacking the clarity for somebody to say, hey, don't do that. You don't need this, 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 or this. You need to put the blinders on, get rid of all of that, and just focus on these. Let's prioritize these and these things that we're going to prioritize now. Let's put this into a step-by-step-by-step-by-step by step by step by step by step, um, instruction, a blueprint, a trail map, and we're going to put these mile posts or these milestones along the way. And then ultimately, we're going to have your ultimate goal um right here at the end of the at the rainbow we're gonna have your pot of gold right here at the end of the rainbow so here's what i want to do today's gonna be a q a and a couple of you guys haley guys give haley some love in the freaking comments haley is absolutely amazing um this this whole thing would not exist without without haley and carlin and james and brandon allison like the, like miri my gosh i have been just absolutely beyond blessed to be around such amazing and wonderful individuals. And they are literally the backbone of, uh, of this entire thing. So I'm, I'm super grateful for them and the opportunity I've had to get to know with them or get to know them and work with them. So please, if you guys get value from coming here, if you guys get value from the Facebook group, the lives, the coaching, like a lot of that stuff is from them. 
Like, not me. Like, they, we have some really amazing things that we're um, going to do. Haley, shoot me a text. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this stuff at all today. We got some really amazing stuff that we're going to be doing. Sorry, guys. I haven't, I'm like starving. I haven't eaten all day. I just polished off an apple and I just pulled out a, <laughs> pulled out a protein bar real quick. We got some really amazing things that we're going to be doing for you guys. And I don't know if I'm supposed to unveil it yet. So while I wait for, um, okay, Haley says don't mention it yet. Okay, cool. So we've got some really cool things in the future, but we're not going to give those, um, we're not going to give those nuggets away yet. So today I wanted to spend some time going and doing a little bit of a Q and A with you guys as well as much of a Q and A as I absolutely can. So one of the things that we really hit on here at the growth co actually, you know what? I'm going to share something with you guys. I want everybody to listen. I want everybody to pay attention. I'm going to read a post to you guys that I read from somebody else. And it's funny because there's a select few people that are picking up on what I've been talking about for a long time. I'm going to read this to you guys. Let me see if I can go back up and find it. Mm. This is from a post I saw yesterday. And I, I, I shared it with my team because I was like, man, how funny is it that um, you get people that are that are or starting to but to understand how to build and scale a business like they're understanding um uh that wholesaling is not the way so this is how the post starts you're never going to reach financial freedom as a wholesaler tough pill to swallow but would you rather i tell you that now or a few years down the line guys this is what i've been trying to tell everybody this is what i've been i've been preaching and this right here serves as like the, the, the core of what the Growth Co. is. Because there's a lot of people that want to get into real estate. I mean, think about, I want you to think about this. I want you guys to, let me, let's go down memory lane here for a second. I want you to think about how you grew up. What were you told about money? What were you told about wealth? What were you told, told about risk and failure and, uh, you know, serving people? What were you told about how to value your time? I want you to think about all of this. At some point in your life, you were told that and your parents or your friends or your, your circle of influence, they were told that from the people that they were around or the people that they grew up with or their family members or their close friends. So you guys have heard this term generational curses. Now it's not generational curse from the sense of people knowingly just giving bad information. But it's a generational curse from, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So if you want to be the one to break that generational curse and escape, here's how most people, here's how most people think about wealth. And at some point, you guys are all here. Think about this for a second. Everybody who's on this Facebook live right now, at some point in your life, you had a thought in your head. That was contrary to what you were told to believe your entire life. And you challenged it. And you said, hey, you know what? I know I was told that I had to go get a college degree and then I had to work 40 or 50 years, um, you know, 40, 50 hours a week for 40, 50 years just so I can retire. I know that's how I was raised. I know that's how what I was told my entire life. But then you also had this other thought, guys. You also had this other thought. It's almost like, you guys remember the Emperor's New Groove? And you got like shoulder, and Kronk has like shoulder angels. Well, one of those shoulder angels whispered into your ear at some point in your life and said, yeah, 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 Jesse, yeah, 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 yeah. You were told all that stuff. True. But, but. And then he whispers, but what if you could? And then that triggered another thought. Then that triggered another thought. And then that triggered an emotion around that thought. And once a, an emotion is triggered around that thought, then you decide to take action on that thought based on that emotion. So I want you to think about this for a second, guys. I want you to think about why you're here. 
What is it you're trying to achieve? Did you guys know that 90% of the 1% are involved in real estate? You probably did. I'd venture a guess. That's probably to some extent why you guys are here. Because if you want what the 1% have, then you got to do what the 1% do. But then there's these other limiting beliefs that come into play. When you decide to get into real estate, there's still kind of a 99% and a 1% underneath that umbrella of real estate. And you got 99% that believe that, hey, you have to do anything and everything other than buying properties because, well, you don't have any resources. You don't have any money. You don't, you don't know how to do this. You've never done this before. So what you need to do is you need to start out wholesaling. And so you got all of these people, the majority of the people who want to build wealth in real estate. They start out wholesaling. They get on that wholesaling hamster wheel and they never get off. And so a lot of what we teach, the majority of what we teach inside the Growth Co. is all about bypassing, fixing and flipping and wholesaling. So you don't have to do that. You can just go right into buying properties. When you look at the 1%, when you look at people like Robert Kiyosaki, when was the last time you read a chapter in Rich Dad, Poor Dad that said, hey, you got to start out wholesaling first. You don't. You don't. And it was funny because I've been talking about this forever now. And I came across a post yesterday where somebody else reiterated the same thing. Now, they weren't talking about buying properties. They're talking about something else. But it was just funny because that's how the post started out. You're never going to get reach financial freedom as a wholesaler. Tough pill to swallow, but would you rather I tell you that now or a few years down the line? And then I'm going to read you. Here, here's more what he, what, he, what he said. Here's what happens. A new person gets into wholesaling to start their real estate investing journey. They struggle for a while and then finally make 10K on a deal or two. They realize making 10K or 10K one time isn't going to help them quit their W-2. They get stuck doing something they enjoy less than their original job, and they are further from their goal than when they started. How do I know that? Because that was not only true for me, but every single person I've worked with. If you want actual financial freedom, you need predictable income. You have to make yourself available 24-7 for a chance at making some money. Doesn't do that. Oh, oh have, ha, I'm sorry. Having to make yourself available 24-7 for a chance at maybe making some money doesn't do that. Anyway, and then he just goes on and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great, dude, because that was me as well. I swallowed that pill. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I got to get out here wholesaling. But guess who's getting rich off of people that are wholesaling? <laughs> the people that are buying properties. They're the ones that are building a business that is predictable, that is scalable, that is simple. And there's no other difference other than what their shoulder angels are whispering in their ear. You got some shoulder angels that are whispering, you can't do this. You don't have any money. You don't have any skills. You've never purchased a property before. Just start out wholesaling. And then you've got other people's shoulder angels that's like, yeah, but what if you could? What if you could? Where we are right now as a country, in the economy, we are witnessing the greatest opportunity. We're, great, we're, we're witnessing the greatest wealth transformation in the history of the entire freaking world. The entire world. As long as the world has been just billions of years. And right now, right now, you are living in the freaking time when it has never been easier to change your entire financial circumstances. But in order to change that, fam... You have to first change your entire uh, world financial view. And this is where, th this is why this Facebook group exists. This is why these lives exist. So what I want to do today, all of this to give context around, if you guys haven't been to these lives before, this is what these lives are for. Not only for information, but again, implementation. I've built this and designed this with me, the old Jesse in mind. Like what would have I what would I have needed to get me from where I was to where I am right now as soon as absolutely possible? 
Here are the two biggest things. I want you guys to write this down. You guys have heard me say this before. Here are the two biggest things that are going to change everything for you. Number one, change your environment. Again, boom. That's why this Facebook group exists. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is a safe space. This is a place for you guys to come and share what your dreams are without the fear of judgment, without the fear of ridicule. Because that's the other hard part. You grew up with people and family out of love telling you that, hey, you probably shouldn't consider this, probably shouldn't do this, don't think about this. Out of love. But the moment you have that thought, that shoulder angel that whisper, that whispers in your ear and says, yeah, but Jesse, what if? W what if you could? And once you have that thought, how do you lean into that thought? You can't go tell, you can't go tell your coworkers. You can't go tell your family. Because you're going to be judged. You're going to be ridiculed. This group is a safe haven for that. This group is a safe place for when you have those thoughts of what if I deserve more, I can be more, I can serve more. That's what this Facebook group is. That's what these lives are for. That's a place for you to come and say, hey guys, uh, this is what I want to do. This is a place for you to come and just be absolutely supported and empowered in everything that you want to do, everything that you want to accomplish. That's what this is for. So number one, you've got to change your environment. That's the first thing you've got to do. And that's exactly what the intention of this Facebook group is. Change your environment. Be around people that will literally brainwash you into believing in yourself. Because that's everything you want to achieve is on the other side of you believing in yourself. And then number two, become a world-class leader. Understand what that means. Actually legit, like write down, like go journal. When people talk about journaling, but then you're like, man, I don't know what I'm supposed to journal about because that was me. I was like, man, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to journal about. This is one of those things. Rich people journal. What does a world-class leader mean to you? And actually write that down. And then start implementing those things right now. I see Shanice. Thank you for um, thank you for being here. She said, "I'm already being told I'm different." What a blessing! What a blessing to be told you're different. I think that's awesome. I think that's something to be celebrated. It already gives you a let up or a leg up and lets you know that you're not standing out in the crowd. I applaud you. That's awesome. You're in good company, Shanice. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing that. So all of this to say, fam, I know we are 25 minutes into this. But for those of you guys that needed a refresher or are new here, I want to, um, I want to use today as kind of like a like a Q and A. So Haley was absolutely amazing, and reached out to actually a few of you guys, and conjured up some really good questions. And I'm going to go over some of those questions that some of you guys asked. And but before we do that, do you guys have any questions? I mean, that's what this group is all about. It's all about building relationships. Because as my good friend, BFF and business partner, Carlin Hoster has said, like this, this what she said, like she comes up with some of like the best one-liners, like they're bangers, they're awesome. We need to put this one on, a, on like a Growth Co. hat. But she said, real estate is not a monogamous relationship. I thought that was really, really awesome. Real estate is not a monogamous relationship. It's, it's all about relationships. It's a polygamous relationship. That sounded weird. But it's true, right? You can't do this thing by yourself. And you know what? 
It's not fun. It's not as fun to do things by yourself anyway. So I want to open this up real quick. Give you guys a chance to get into some Q&A. Is there things that you guys have going on? Things that you guys want to know about? Now, if you guys don't have any questions, I'll just kind of start going into some of the questions that you guys have already submitted. And then we'll kind of go from there. Devin says teamwork makes a dream work. I just want to see if you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to monitor the chat. So you guys just, when you think of them, feel free to throw them in the chat. Oh, Devin says, what are my thoughts on raps? I personally am not a fan of raps. Uh, that, that, that could be a zoom series in and of itself, but yeah, I'm, I'm personally not a, not a fan of raps. Okay, so let's go into question number one. First question that was asked is how do I consistently get first access to the best deals? What an amazing question. I wish Haley would have gotten names with these actually. That would have been freaking, that would have been dope. Um, or maybe she does and I just I just didn't, um, didn't grab them. So how do I consistently get access to the best deals? Well, if you're like me, and you guys don't want to wholesale and you just want to go into buying properties, then guess what? It's pretty simple. It's all about relationships. It's all about keeping relationships. It's all about making relationships, sustaining relationships. The more people that you can find to help get what they want, the faster you get what you want. This whole game is all relationship. You guys know... What was his, oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'm so embarrassed. Don't judge me right now. Um, oh, what was his name? What was his name? Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. It's on the tip of my tongue here. Hold on, guys. I know someone's going to put in the chat. Tom Cruise. Guys, it's not Tom Cruise. It's not Tom Cruise. Uh, oh my gosh, it's right there on the, it's right there. He amassed this big, big fortune. Uh, Rockefeller. That was it. Rockefeller. <laughs> Sean Clark. <laughs> no, Rockefeller. When he died, they went through Rockefeller's um, Rolodex. He had a Rolodex of people that he did business with. And in this Rolodex, they found something that was really, really interesting. And what they found was not only did he have an outline, the names of the individuals that he did business with, but he had like really personal things in there about them. He had, he had, uh, he had, you know, if he, if, if, if John Rockefeller was, was talking to, uh, Jane Smith about doing some business and Jane Smith had a daughter named Haley that was starting fourth grade. And she was nervous and she brought that up in the conversation. Like he would write those things down. And it's funny because this sounds so simple, guys. This sounds so simple. But notice the focus here. Notice the intention. When John Rockefeller was talking to somebody and they brought these things up in conversation, he took the time to annotate these things, to write these things down to, so that he could recall them. So when he calls Jane, I'm like, Jane, hey, last time we talked, it's great to connect with you. Um, hey, last time we talked, you know, Haley was getting ready to start fourth grade. How's she liking that, by the way? Like, oh my gosh, do you see how different the conversation is? The issue that most people have with building relationships is they make it purely transactional. It's purely like, hey, let's do this deal. I got this deal. You got this. I got this. You got that. What do you have? What do you need? Like that's how they, that's how they, uh, they, they approach relationships. 
And it's so funny because it's these little things that make the biggest difference. How do you want to stand out in front of somebody? How do you want to serve? How do you want to be perceived? Really? The question that you need to be asking is, if you want the best deals, then you've got to build the best relationships. You got to be somebody who thinks of literally everybody else before themselves. And that's just inherently not a human quality. Most people are selfish AF. Most, most people think about themselves before they think about anybody else. Most people will ask or look at a relationship from the perspective of how can I benefit from that relationship as opposed to asking themselves, how can I serve this relationship? So it really is quite simple. It really comes back to understanding, you know, what does human nature look like? And if I already know that this is how most people are going to act, then this is what I need to do to stand out from the crowd. And when you realize how little people will do to build a relationship, it's not that difficult to actually stand out, to go the extra mile. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I have on, um, that I have a reminder on my phone with, I have a, a notification that goes off on my phone every single day. And it says, send gratitude texts. And I have a list of people that I want to build relationships with. I have a list of people that I'm continuing to build and solidify relationships with. And um, I, I start at the top of this list and then I work my way down this list. And every single day I get that notification that says send gratitude text. And I get the opportunity to reach out to that individual with no agenda, um, you know, no, uh, no inkling of um, self-service uh, or anything like that, self-indulgence. It's all from the perspective of, how can I serve this individual and let this individual know how grateful I am to have them in my life? So if you want to have the best deals, you've got to have the best relationships. That's the answer to question number one. How do I consistently get first access to the best deals? Then you got to get access to the best relationships and then you got to serve those individuals. You got to make it. Everybody else is looking at relationships from a very transactional perspective. You want to do the opposite of that. Number two, I'm getting tons of deals in. I'm getting tons of deals in, but they're all awful. Sometimes I'll get one or two good ones, but usually it's too late. What can I do? So you're getting tons of deals in, but they're all awful. Sometimes you get one or two good ones, but usually it's too late. I think here's, here's a big thing. I think that from what I've seen from people is they overthink things. So let's say they do find a good deal. Let's, th let, let's talk about that for a second. Let's say you get, you're getting deals in that you can actually move on. Let's actually a matter of fact, let's, let's put the, 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 uh, odds not in your favor for a second, just so I can, just so I can communicate this. I really, I'm not even talking about like, let's say this, I don't know. I'm going to read this question again. I'm getting tons of deals in, but they're all awful. Sometimes I'll get one or two good ones, but usually it's too late. What can I do? So let's pretend that those one or two good deals isn't even deals in a day. Let's say that's in a week. Let's say you get one to two good deals a week. Now, if you're doing the things that I teach you to do when it comes to buying properties, you're getting paid on buying these properties. Um, and you're able to start actually building a portfolio, you get one deal a week in that you can actually buy? My goodness, like let's take a step back here. That's 52 properties a year. You get one deal a week that you can buy? That's 52 a year. And depending on what your exit strategy or whatever is, let's kind of put that in context here. That's a lot of moolah. You'd be surprised how, how few of properties you need to buy to actually get you cash flowing a high number, um, you know, every single month. So what can you do? If it's usually too late, then I think that's where you need to start. Your processes, the things that you have in place, your due diligence is just not very good. You spend too much time uh, over analyzing. Um, you don't have your systems in place. Your, the people that you have in place either are not trained, you brought the wrong people on, 
Um, you haven't set the right boundaries. You haven't set the right expectations. I mean, a lot of this comes back to leadership, growing your business in general, like being able to achieve the result that you're actually after. A lot of this stuff comes back to leadership. Haley says the good deals disappear too fast though. That's what I'm saying. They disappear too fast because somebody else has the processes in place. Somebody else hired the person that knows what they're doing. And while a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines asking, hey, is this something I should move on? Is this something I should not move on? You know, am I able to, to get this done? If I put EMD in, do I think I could go raise the money for it? Like your, your order of operations are all messed up. A lot of you guys want to buy properties, but you start focus on, you, you'll spend 10 times the amount of time analyzing deals. And then you think in your head, the time to go raise money is after you find a good deal. Then you're going to go start raising money. It is the complete opposite way. Again, this goes back to relationships, right? Prioritizing which relationships you need. What do you not? How many people are you, you know, jumping on a Zoom on or a Zoom with every single week? How many of those people have access to capital? Well, there you go. Of course, they're moving too fast. They're disappearing too fast because you don't have the right things lined up. You don't have capital all ready to go. Because if you did and you had the right person that was confident in looking at those numbers, you'd be able to pounce on them a lot sooner. And most people just are very, very indecisive. And that isn't a dig. That just comes with experience. That just comes with taking action. And if you're not gaining that confidence, then you're simply just not taking enough action. Ooh, here's a good one. Number three, what's the best way to find off-market deals without spending a ton on marketing? This is a really good one. So as you guys know, me and Chris James are partners. He and I started a partnership in June, June 1st of 2022. Now here's something that's really cool. I wanna share this with you guys. One thing, a skill that I've gotten really, really good at is being extremely resourceful. Guys, it doesn't take, everybody write this down. It doesn't take money to make money. It takes resources. It takes resources. It takes people. It takes relationships. Chris and I first became business partners and we started out starting a wholesaling business. And when our partnership started on June 1st, we were like, well, let's just start out wholesaling and we don't have any money or access to money. So before we start, you know, hiring a VA and hiring on all these people, let's just figure out what our skill set is. What's our skills? What are, what's your superpower? Like, what are you good at? What am I good at? Let's have that conversation. And then let's just go serve as many freaking people as we can with those skills. And Chris was like, well, I'm a closer. And I'm like, that's great, dude. I'm a closer too. So here we got two visionaries. We got two closers. We have no integrators, guys. So let me just kind of debunk that belief right now. If some of you guys are, are afraid of not moving forward because you don't have an integrator or you don't have somebody who can do this or do that, listen to me. We're, we're, we're asking the wrong questions here, okay? We're focusing on the wrong thing. So what Chris and I did, we're like, hey, if we're just going to go close deals for people, here's what this means. Let's define what it means to be a closer. And let's also define what it means to not be a closer. So if our priority is just to, go, just to go close deals for people, then that means we're not generating leads. That means we're not underwriting properties. That means we're not raising capital. That means we're not dispoing of properties. That means we're not handling paperwork. That literally just means that we are closing deals, which means all these other things have to get done, but not by us. So here's what we did between June 1st and June 15th, we had that two week period. And the only thing that we did, we, we started a Calendly. We had that Calendly begin on June 16th. And we were just filling up that Calendly with just tons and tons of networking meetings. We were doing like eight hours a day. We were probably meeting with close to about 200 people a month for an hour, for an hour guys. So what we ended up doing 
was between June 1st and June 15th, for that two-week period, the only thing that we did was fill up the Calendly that started on June 16th. So for two, imagine this. I want you to think about how you guys spend your day. I want you to think about all the things that you guys try to multitask on every single day versus just one thing. What if your only job was just getting people to sign up for your Calendly? From the moment that you woke up to the moment that you went to bed, while you're at work, while you're on your lunch break, after work, before bed, all this, your only job, again, comes back to relationships, is to get people on your Calendly. How much could you get done if that was the only thing you had to do for two weeks? A lot. So we filled up our Calendly for like the next 45 days by just doing that. So when June 16th rolled around, we no longer had to wonder whether or not you know, uh, we were going to talk to somebody that day and how we were going to talk to them and when we were going to talk to them and what we were going to talk to them about. Like everything from the moment June 16th started moving forward for the next several months, next about four or five months, everything was structured. We knew what time we our, our meeting started. We knew who we were having them with. We knew what we were talking about. And we knew what we were trying to do. Again, to refresh your guys' memory here, our intent was to take our skill of closing deals and to go serve as many people as we could with that. Well, here's what we found. When we structured our day like that, it was intentional, it was meticulous, it was predictable. We started creating a business model that was scalable. We started to find tons of people during these meetings that had VAs, that had leads coming in, they had a CRM, they had a dialer, they had all these things. What they didn't have was either the expertise to close these deals or the time to close these deals. So that's where Chris and I came in. So Chris and I would get plugged into these people's CRMs and we would start making calls on their leads. Now, when you talk to 200 people a month, you guys, you're going to find deals. You're going to find money. You're going to find opportunities. So let me go back to this question real quick. The question was, what's the best way to find off-market deals without spending a ton on marketing? That is exactly what we did. You got to understand what is your skill set? What do you bring to the market? Because the money that you make is a direct reflection of the caliber of skills that you bring to the marketplace. So start off with what is it that you're actually good at? What is it that you are actually good at? And go find a way to serve more people. That's how you start getting into off-market deals without spending a ton on marketing. Go find somebody else where you can go serve them and you can solve that problem. Okay, number four, should I focus on a specific type of property for higher deal, deal volume? That's going to come back to you. I think it really just depends on what your exit strategy is. What is it you're trying to accomplish? Um, you know, whether you're doing fix and flips, whether you're doing pad splits, MTRs, STRs, any of that stuff, it doesn't matter. Um, it's up to you to focus on and understand what is the exit strategy? What is that, that uh, you know, what is your business model? Um, and then from there to, to this question's point, volume is going to solve 99% of your problems. So the question is, should I focus on a specific type of property for higher deal volume? I can't answer that. It kind of just depends on your, your um, business model and what it is you're trying to do. But I will say that volume will solve everything. And so one of the things that I always have my clients do when it comes to setting goals is to be thinking in terms of like 10x always think like 10 X because it's going to get you thinking bigger than just a thing here or a thing there. Ooh, Anthony asked a really great question in the comments. How do you clarify what it is you are best at? Everybody has a gift, man. Everybody has a gift. We were all, we all came to this earth with, with a gift, with a superpower, something that you do better than anybody else, simply just because of who you are. Just because of the way that you operate, the way that you tick, there's something that you do. Here, here's the best way to describe what a gift is. Your gift is the thing that you do at your best with the least amount of effort. Okay, 
Your gift is the thing that you do at your best with the least amount of effort. So in order to clarify what that is, if you don't already know what that is, and that's okay because some people don't, I would take a little bit of time. Make, make that in and of itself your goal. Go talk to people. Go talk to your spouse. Go talk to your parents. Go talk to your friends, your siblings, your coworkers. Say, hey, what are some of the things that you notice about me that I do at my best? What are some of the things that you notice that I do better than anybody else? I think that's such a great question, Anthony. I'm so glad that you asked that. Like, for me, I've got the gift of gab. Love to talk. I'm a social butterfly. I love making friends with people. Did you know that in and of itself is something you can monetize? That in and of itself is something that you can serve other people because there are other people that don't want to be in front of a camera. There are other people that don't want to be public speaking. There are other people that don't want to be front and center. They want to be behind the curtain kind of running the business and operating things. So you go find somebody else that you can take that talent to and you can serve them. You can compliment them. And then together you go serve and, and um, uh, find other people that you can, you can help. So I hope that actually, I hope that gave you somewhere to go or something to consider, Anthony. Nathaniel, what's up, big dog? Sage says, what if you know you're more of a closer but never closed a deal before? Dude, great question. Then that's what you need to focus on, man. If you want to be a closer but you've never closed a deal before, then that's what you focus on. So you start to ask yourself, what are some of the things that I need to do to become a Michael Jordan of closers? What does that look like? What skills do I need to build? Well, I need to understand sales at an extremely high level. So you start going and reading books on sales. Guys, here's what's really interesting. Most people, I think most people underestimate the, uh, the value of a good book. Elon Musk, who's created all these things, has done so through just reading tons and tons. He doesn't have a formal education in any of this stuff, any of this aerospace or propulsion or any of this stuff, dude. The guy just reads tons and tons and tons and tons of books. If you've never closed a deal before, but you want to move on being a closer, go read books on sales. Go read books on how to negotiate and how to persuade. Go read books on, on psychology, on human nature. How to win friends and influence people. Believe it or not, that is a great book for sales and for closers. Go understand how to tell stories. Ooh, Nathaniel right there. Come to the Helping Hands Hour. He's got a Zoom that he does every single week. Come to that. Be around um, be around the right people. It goes back to what I was telling you guys at the beginning. Change your environment. You guys got some really, really great questions. So he says, can I plug myself into someone else's leads and learn to close to? Dude, 100%. 100%, man. Go find somebody else that doesn't have anybody to, to close their leads and go trade your time for money. Go learn that skill. Otherwise, these individuals are just going to have leads that are coming in that are just collecting dust. Yeah, I think that's great. This is awesome, guys. Okay, and then here is the last one. How can I grow my deal flow while still maintaining a full-time job? This comes back to relationships, guys. You can do so much while having a full-time job. I think a full-time job is really, really great. Because it allows you, contrary to popular belief, it gives you the opportunity to really understand what skills you need to focus on. The problem I think that most people have when they have a W-2 and they think that it's getting in the way of growing their business is simply because if they didn't have a W-2 and they all of a sudden had eight hours a day to do stuff with, what they would do is they'd focus their eight hours on all the other things that don't matter. And then a year would go by before they'd have that experience to be able to look back on and be like, oh, wow, I didn't focus on the things that I needed to focus on. Guys, 
20% is all it takes. The results that you guys have right now, if you've done a deal, if you've made any kind of money, you know, whatever it is, all that was due to only about 20% of the things that you freaking do. How interesting is that? One fifth, one fifth of the things that you guys do produce 100% of your results. Growing your business while having a full-time job, I think is the ultimate test of that. Because if you've only got two or three hours a day to work on growing your business, then what you have to really understand is are my habits, are my day-to-day -day activities actually in line with the things that are going to push my business forward? Because if you can grow your business working three hours a day while maintaining a full-time job and kids, like all these other kind of things, my goodness, I can't wait to see what you do when you, when you all of a sudden have eight hours a day. What you shouldn't do is quit your job or think that you need to quit your job. Think that your job is any kind of a hindrance um, is definitely not the way to be thinking about this. If you can identify, I like to do a time and uh, what's called a time and energy audit. And you guys, I invite you guys to do it this week, actually. Um, starting on, on uh, well, I guess you guys could start today if you wanted to. Start today and in 15 minute increments, like literally annotate exactly what you do every 15 minutes all day long. And I want you guys to do that for a week. So from Thursday to Thursday next week. And then Friday, set some time aside and look back at what you did Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I want you to look at everything that you did, every phone call you took, every live that you jumped on, every Zoom that you jumped on, every person that you talked to, every second you spend sending text messages. And I want you to tally up how many of those things that you did throughout the entire week actually had anything to do with the result that you're actually after. So especially if you have a W-2, I'd highly encourage you to do that. Because likely if you've only got two to three hours a day working on your business, I can guarantee the majority of the things you're doing, you're focusing on the wrong stuff. So having this W-2, I think is the perfect, perfect time to grow your business because it's going to require you to grow your skills. But if you use it as a crutch and an excuse as to why you can't grow your business, then let me tell you right now, you are surely mistaken. You are focusing on all the wrong things. That's all I've got for you guys. You guys asked some amazing questions. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate you. I know we're coming up on an hour. Um, I'm really excited. We've got a lot of really neat things coming up. Um, Haley said I can't unveil those yet, but I definitely um, will here shortly into the future. Nathaniel, love you, bro. Thank you for jumping on, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, ba -dum, ba -dum. I think I've got everything. I think that's everything I got for you guys. Thank you all. Love you guys. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate you all. Hope you guys have an amazing Thursday and we will chat with you guys soon.